Do you want to dig deeper into the abyss that is DaVinci Resolve 18? Well, in this video, I'm going to be showing you seven of the most randomest tips that I have discovered that improved my workflow and my editing skills as an editor. My name's Dan, and you're watching Dan Vinci. Let's go! Okay, so let me first tell you about the structure of this video real quick. With the seven facts, I'm going to start with the smallest and the quickest first. Let's jump into number one. Oh, yeah. Now, number one is a very, very simple trick that I wish I knew from the very start. All right, so we're here in Resolve, and this is the timeline for my previous video, How to Mask Like a Pro. And in this timeline, over to the left here, we have obviously the lock track and the auto track selector and the disabled video track, everything that we're familiar with with DaVinci Resolve in the edit page. Because I edited on Adobe for so long, I used to think that you could just drag along here and select them, very similar to Premiere Pro or After Effects, where you want to just select multiple things. You drag while selecting your cursor all the way down, and it will select all of those various options. But obviously in DaVinci Resolve, it doesn't work. For the longest time, I couldn't figure out why. Why? Why? What I didn't realize until today is that if you hold shift and click on lock track, it locks all the tracks. And then obviously you can select the one that you actually want to unlock. And obviously if you've got a few tracks unlocked and some locked, you can just click shift and it'll unlock all of them and then you can lock them again. And it's the same with the auto track selector and it's the same with the disabled video track selector. It took me so flipping long to figure this out. Future Dan here, filming on my phone. I just discovered something else as well. And now I'm even more of an idiot. Yay. I'm editing this part of the video right now. And I thought, hmm, shift turns them all off. What does alt do? Okay, so let's say you want to disable this particular video track here, that one, and you click alt and you click on it on the keyboard. I'm doing this with two hands, it's quite awkward. There you go. It just disables like that. Look at that. How did I not know this before? And it's the same with auto track selector. I cannot put into words how stupid I feel. Hopefully I've saved all of you some hassle. Let's move on to number two. Yeah! So my second tip is transformation controls in the color tab. Now I can't tell you when I started in DaVinci Resolve how much I wasted of my own time going back and forth in the edit page from the color page to make a simple zoom in, crop in adjustment. When really all you need to do is go into your color tab, open the effects library, search transform, drag the transform effect over to your latest node and then just zoom it in like that. And you can make all sorts of adjustments in the color tab just like that. Okay, so number three is a bit of a hack. Now hear me out, it's gonna seem weird. I'm a weird person, but we all know that. That's why you've subscribed. If you use DaVinci Resolve on a daily basis like me, you are hammering your computer hard to the point where it literally could set on fire and spontaneously explode. And as you're doing so, it will occasionally mess up, start stuttering, start losing its footing. So every time you click play, you get this frustrating lag where it's just like sitting at 13 frames a second and you're like, I just want to watch my damn video. But the only way you know how to restart this is by quite literally turning resolve on and off again. I have worked out a little bit of a workaround and that is timeline proxy resolution. Now you might be thinking that's not very helpful Dan. Just hear me out, okay. You can actually toggle timeline proxy resolution on and off quite quickly. To do this all you need to do is open your keyboard customization controls and search in the search bar timeline proxy. And then obviously you can apply this by clicking here, click on this, click F4 and save, boom, F4 is now quarter resolution. All I need to do is toggle it on and then toggle it off and 80, 85% of the time, this does actually fix the stupid stuttering that I see all the time. <laughs> So my next point, I've completely forgotten which number I'm on by now. Now this one is actually lowering the resolution within Fusion. And to do this, it's quite simple. It's actually quite hidden as well. So let's say we're playing back our footage here and it's lagging quite a bit, looking quite bad. If we right click here, we can actually turn off high quality and turn off motion blur. For some reason, these are on by default. I don't actually know how you can toggle this to be off by default yet. I've looked through some of the settings in Fusion. I can't seem to find it. Comment down below if you have, but otherwise it's always on by default. It's a little bit annoying. You can turn it off. You'll notice at least it will play back a little bit better, especially if you're on a snail of a computer. All right then, so my next point is actually right clicking on merge nodes in the Fusion tree. For the longest amount of time, I just manually changed the inputs on the merge node when I didn't realize that you could actually invert the inputs just by right clicking and clicking invert. And that just saves a hell of a lot of time over a long period of time. Let's move on to the next point. These are so quick and super fast. Now this next point is useful if you're coming from After Effects. And in After Effects, by default, the scroll wheel would be the zoom. But this is different in Fusion. What? 
and this really grinded my gears so much that I had to click control and zoom in. Hidden in the fusion settings in the top left corner of your screen, you will find under user interface, touch scrolling and mouse wheel. You want your settings to be just like this and it will be the same as if you're in After Effects, or at least this is how I prefer it. All right then, so moving on to the next point. This is just a simple trick that I use on a regular basis. This tip is only really useful if you have DaVinci Resolve 18 Studio. Now I have a stock image of a person. Now typically stock images aren't really PNGs, they're not very clear and they're not transparent, but I want this person to be on a blue background. How on earth would I do this quickly and efficiently without having to completely mask it out and spend loads of time and wasting loads of time? If you jump into the color tab, click on the magic mask, select your person like that, click on this little tool here to see what the magic mask is doing and boom we've now cut out that person then we need to just right click in the node tree click add alpha output drag this down and connect that to the blue dot if we go into our edit page now we have the person make the person into a new comp click r on your keyboard and click freeze frame click change and now we have a cutout of a person like that masked in seconds so that is basically it i hope you guys have enjoyed this video that's been seven wonderful tips that i thought i'd share with you guys out in the world of youtube do feel free to subscribe but otherwise I will see you in another video. My name's Dan and you've watched Dan Vinci. I'll see you later. Bye bye.